We are joined by Janet Boite from Campaign for Public Education. She's here to talk about the area review that's going on with respect to downtown elementary schools. There are nine schools that the accommodation review is taking place for. Church Street uh, Public School, Jesse Ketchum, Junior and Senior Public Schools, Lord Dufferin Junior and Senior, Market Lane, Nelson Mandela Park, Regent Park, Duke of York, Rose Avenue, Spruce Court, and Winchester. And there are four public meetings scheduled with respect to this program review. The first has already taken place on March 22nd. That was at Spruce Court. And for the community, there are three more coming up on April 12th at Duke of York Public School, on May 17th at Lord Dufferin, which is 350 Parliament Street, and on the 14th of June at Winchester. It's a really important uh, review that the board is running through as one of the possible outcomes is the closure of one or more of those schools. So they're looking at the programming being offered downtown and uh, how our schools are being utilized. And Janet, very happy to have you with us. Thank you. And uh, I know you were at the meeting on March 22nd, so maybe you can give us an update as to where this process is at. Well, it's, it's hard to say. The, uh, most of the meeting was uh, spent by TDSB officials explaining what the accommodation review process was going to entail and that there would be a committee and, uh, and that accommodation review could be held for a number of things, changing boundaries, closing a school, and consolidating schools, so it's another word for closing, and, uh, and spent a great deal of time basically talking at the uh, audience, which was quite sparse. And it's sparse because uh, very little notice is given about these meetings. Um, a last minute letter is sent home to parents with a uh, very cursory two-line translation on the back and um, a few of the neighboring homes, a, a scattering of neighboring homes, get a notice that the uh, meeting is going to take place. That was one of the questions that came from the floor, is how come nobody knows this meeting is happening? And, uh, and another good question that came from the floor of that meeting was why are Rosedale Public School and Whitney Public School not included in this ARC process and in fact three schools in the ward were excluded the island school perhaps for obvious reasons and um, but Rosedale and Whitney the two two of the schools in the wealthiest neighborhood in Toronto are excluded from this art process Janet where uh, do you sense and does campaign for public education sense the pressure for this particular arc focusing on the ward 14 downtown schools is coming from at this time I think it's coming from the same place that school closings and, uh, and arcs are all coming from, and it's driven by the province of Ontario. It's uh, a cost-saving measure, and uh, it goes the the reason for our poor cash strap board goes back 12 years. But um, the uh, the the school boards right across Ontario have been told that the uh, by the province that the province has no intention of changing the Mike Harris funding formula substantially and uh, that the school boards have to examine their real estate portfolios and divest themselves I know Janet that uh, the board has said that the closing of a school is only a, a possible outcome and I, I try not to be a cynic although I did notice when I was looking at the budget for this year that $2.5 million in operating savings are penciled in from school closures. Am I wrong to be reading into that? No, I don't think so, but it's kind of mysterious to uh, uh, wonder which school they're penciling in. If they're penciling in Briar Hill, which is in Ward 8, or uh, it was one of the arcs that took place, but the outcome was delayed um, by a recommendation from a trustee that uh, something different be done in that area. So that was one of nine schools that should have sh would have closed, and instead the board closed eight last year, and this decision is pending. So it could be penciled in for that school. I don't know. Yeah. Janet, as a resident of Ward 14, uh, I don't currently have children in the public school system, mm -hmm. but it certainly concerns me. What can I do to get involved to make my voice heard on this issue? Well, it's really hard to inform yourself, uh, but I think that's the first step. And uh, one is to begin to attend the public meetings that you gave the dates of. The next one is on April the 12th. And um, 
uh, I would go to two websites to start to educate myself about what's going on. The first one would be the Campaign for Public Education uh, website, which is www.campaignforpubliceducation.ca, and, uh, and go to the TDSB website to uh, see what has been uh, going on in the past. It's not too terribly informative, but if you... Uh, Google up Toronto District School Board and uh, s go and search Better Schools, Brighter Futures. And uh, you can find out a little about the uh, ARC place from the Toronto District School Board's position. Uh, I got a question. So this the organization with, it's called, what's it called? The Campaign for Public Education. It's a coalition mm -hmm. of uh, two dozen organizations and former trustees and uh, basically, we've been in existence. Um, Mike Harris gave birth to us oh. at the, uh, shortly after the funding formula. And the purpose for our existence is to fight the funding formula. And after Harris is, uh, not, I guess after Harris was gone and then Eves took over and then Eves lost him again to you guys, were you guys considering well, disbanding we were, at that point? Or? Oh, no. Uh, mm -hmm. we were, going, we're going to continue until education is fairly and adequately funded. Um, Mike Harris turned the funding of public education on its ear, mm -hmm. and um, in the in the good old days before Mike, uh, we used to get a share of local municipal taxes, and in return for that share of mo municipal taxes, we were responsive to community need. So in Toronto, um, that would mean adult English as a second language. It meant uh, programs for seniors. It meant a lot of general interest courses. It meant that the city and the school boards had this symbiotic relationship for parks and recreation, and that's how 40 school, 40 school pools were built, and all the kids in Toronto learned to swim. And uh, f at first, when the um, new funding formula came into place and we lost our share of municipal taxes and the city, ev the relationship with the city just evaporated. Yeah. The, all funding for education came from a big bag of money in uh, Queen's Park. Right. And when we got our share of the bag of money, it was substantially smaller than what we were used to uh, funding our school system with. Mm -hmm. It, uh, it's been eating into the core funding for education now. We are in our 14th year of cuts. Well, both, uh, it's interesting because both Rob and I uh, are children of the Harris era. Um, ah, I, yeah. I think I'm a bit older than Rob. I'm, uh, uh, 1984, so I was about mm -hmm. in grade 5 when he came in. I believe 95 mm -hmm. did he come in? Mm -hmm. 95, yeah, in grade 5. And um, I did notice, I don't know how much of it I could directly say was because of the policies or whatnot, but I did notice that... Uh, uh, we had a lot of cutbacks, especially when mm -hmm. I got to high school. Yes. Um, there was no soap. I went to C.W. Right. Jeffries in the Jane Finch area, not far from New York University. No soap in the washroom mm -hmm. by the time I left. Sure. Uh, and, well, the janitor told us that it was because of cutbacks. I don't know what the exact lines were. But well, there weren't enough guys to uh, keep the place in, in reasonable shape either. Mm. Uh, year after year, caretaking staff and secretarial staff and admin staff, particularly a group of employees called educational assistants, were cut and cut and cut and cut. Last June, uh, the board cut to uh, fire 150 regular uh, educational assistants, the ones that work wow. in kindergarten. And yeah. in Toronto, they're, they're an important group of people. Um, mm -hmm. When children enter the kindergarten situation, they, they're they unknown to the school system. There's this, right. So it is here where things are identified, like yeah. Hearing problems, vision problems, social epilepsy. problems. Too, yeah. yeah, all yeah. kinds of things. Well, I think Jesse, actually, your your reference to a lack of soap in the washroom leads us, though, mm -hmm. to another issue I wanted to raise, which yes. isn't related to the school closings, but guidelines have come out now around school fees and what can be charged for and what can't mm -hmm. be charged for, and draft fundraising guidelines. One of the things that I will admit troubled me was the draft fundraising guidelines. Well, I think properly don't allow fundraising for core activities or for the classroom, will allow fundraising for a playground or a new track or outdoor athletic facilities and a number of other facilities, my fear is that this is going to lead to a greater divide. Communities that can't afford, most, most appropriately will provide for their children where they can, 
but communities will be left behind. And I wonder if the campaign for public education has uh, has considered this issue at all. Oh, absolutely. Um, and there is a very interesting report that came out from the Metro Toronto uh, Social Planning Council on fundraising in schools. And uh, they reported that uh, the school board is now relying on uh, $400 million in fundraising. And of course, that only the bulk of that will come from schools in what we call the uh, lower half of the Learning Opportunities Index. It's, um, uh, it's, it's really pathetic. Um, it's been going on for some time. Um, the trustees had to approve, uh, after great debate, pop machines in schools that were to to add to the school's discretionary budget and, uh, and other things. But uh, it's uh, also interesting to notice, too, that uh, there was a recent study by somebody doing carbon footprints of schools that the uh, pop machines are sucking up so much power, they're probably uh, absorbing the money that, was <laughs> that they were there to raise. But anyway. Yeah. Janet, thank you so much for joining oh. us. Can you give us that website one more time for Campaign for Public Education? Yes, mm -hmm. www.campaignforpubliceducation, oh, one word, <laughs> dot ca. Campaign for Public Education dot ca. Yes. And um, is that the best way to get in directly involved, I guess? Well, it's one way to, to start uh, becoming informed about school mm -hmm. closings. There's another um, website called www.saveourschools.org. Right, right. Dot org. Um, that's, uh, that's another quick way to be uh, become informed. And please attend a public meeting. The next one, if you live in Ward 14, go to uh, the next public meeting on April the 12th. At it's April the 12th at the Duke of York uh, Public School, Regent Park, Duke of York Public School, and yeah. that's at 20 Regent Street. And after that, on May 17th, is Lord Dufferin Public School, and June 14th is at Winchester Public School. I thought Duke of York was just a pub, but we're glad to hear that. <laughs> I'm of, of the right age for that. Um, and uh, just, just finally, uh, yes. Ward 14, just in case listeners aren't familiar with the war, what general area is that, just in case listeners are not sure? If, what Absolutely. Ward, they ward, ward 14 is essentially the uh, federal riding of Toronto Centre. So if you're represented by Bob Ray, federally or by Glen Murray provincially, you most likely mm -hmm. fall in Ward 14 with some very minor adjustments right at the edges. Now, let, let me just just specify, there might be non-political junkies listening. Um, what general area? That's Toronto downtown, uh, Young, is it, Young it, the border? Uh, it's, it's Young from, to the Don River. Yeah, oh, okay. basically Young to the Don River and from the waterfront all the way up and including all of Rosedale. Right, right. And if you're not a political junkie, it still affects you and, you know, it affects you, your children if you have School them. School closings are coming to a neighborhood near you. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter what, you, what your political opinions are. This is an issue that affects everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah and uh, we urge you to get involved. Um, whether you have kids or not, it's your community and you want it to be uh, the, the best it can be. Uh, website one more time. Uh, <laughs> www.campaignforpubliceducation.ca All right. You never know. If people are in their cars, they got to stop and <laughs> write notes, right? <laughs> okay. All right, Janet. Uh, Bioiti, uh, correct? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you so much for coming on. Right. And uh, we hope you can keep us updated. Um, and feel free to come on again if you want to give us any updates. Uh, any area in the city, we're happy to have you on again. My pleasure. I can go on at this <laughs> ad nauseum. So much for being here, Janet. <laughs> thank you.